2024 meeting. I'm going to call to order the October 15, 2024 meeting of the East on Metal Planning Board to order. Uh, though um, I'm required to ask if there's anyone in the audience or by Zoom who might be recording this meeting. If so, please state your name and the method you're recording the meeting. Hearing none, uh, I'm going to do a roll call. We'll start with Mr. Punderson, Pete Punderson. Cassandra Cherswillow. Russell Denver. Bill Fonseca. Rob Terrell. And we're joined by? Rob Pachilla. Thank you, Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, first item is the approval of the September 17th, 2024 open session minutes. Hopefully people have had an opportunity to review them. Any corrections, edits? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And I'll abstain. Okay. So first item, Mr. Clerk. Case SP-2024-08, request for amendment of special permit SP-2009-0011 for Frank Schilla landscaping at 329 Westwood Ave. Assessor's parcel ID 5-2-0 for a home-based trade located in the RB zoning district. Applicant Francesco Rochella, 329 Westwood Ave, East Long Middle Mass, 01028. Continued from 9-17-24. So we continued the public hearing. And before we take additional testimony from anyone who might be interested in speaking on this matter, just let everyone know that at 5-15 this evening, we uh, the planning board conducted a site visit uh, of the property, uh, had an opportunity to get in, see how everything was structured, what was there, uh, talked a little bit about some potential uh, changes that might need to take place. Uh, thank you for allowing us onto the property to kind of do that. Appreciate it very much. So if there's uh, anyone who would like to continue or to address this board, please step forward. No one wants to address the board? Yeah. Uh, please step forward. Oh, you want me to sit right here? Yeah, and sign in, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then just for the TV, if you could state your name and address, that would be great. Uh, Ronald J. Dean, uh, 23 Lassard Circle. Uh, I'm one of the abutters to the uh, property from uh, Mr. Rochella. I've lived two houses down from uh, Mr. France. Okay. Uh, 43 years I worked at Melbourne Bradley, eight years retired. I want to address, direct your attention to uh, zoning analysis, number four zoning analysis. I don't know. I have I don't know if you know it's a joining analysis section A number two four fifty eight point eight noise regulations enumerated in Islam Metal General Bylaw Chapter three six three noise shall be ap applicable to any special permit issue uh, issued under this section. Uh, vehicles with backup signal alarms should be placed so as not to activate during the early morning or late night hours in case of birds here or other weather responses. Uh, the let Matt Cran sent a letter suggesting that noise is a concern and the board should make this a condition of the uh permit. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say what um now that I've been uh retired, uh every day is like more precious than ever, you know. And uh I noticed Mr. Rochelle, even before eight o'clock in the morning, he's got his bobcats going, he's got his his big uh tractors going. Uh, sometimes before eight, sometimes six, seven, eight till dark, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, uh, basically quality of life. I can't go on the deck many, many times. I got to leave the house because I'm I just, you know, after a while, you just had enough. But I leave the house, which is pathetic. I can't enjoy my backyard. So I leave my house and come back two, three hours later. It's, it just never ends. And uh I just, I put up with it so long and I just, I'm, I got to be true to myself and I just say what I had to say, you know, and just, it's not, there's no, there's no, there's no respect, you know, and I have all nice neighbors on my 
Nobody wants to make any waves or anything. I haven't done it for 30 some years. I've been there since 93 and none of us want to make waves, but I have to be, you know, enough's enough, you know? And I didn't know about, you know, like, uh, home, you know, the home based trade or home based business. I didn't know what the rules were back then. So I kind of took it, took it for granted. Maybe I don't know if, uh, if I was naive or not, but I thought that that was just the way it was. And I had to just put up with it. But now I'm finding out that there's rules of regulations and stipulations about what he's supposed to do. Like after a certain, like five o'clock or Saturdays or holidays, you know, you know what I mean? Now I'm hearing there's all these things he's supposed to buy by and I let it slide, but I had enough right now. So the way the bylaw was set up is he came in and he got a special permit Yeah, and there were conditions placed on okay. that. Um, so he does have the right specifically because you mentioned Saturday, Sunday, so he does oh. have the right as a condition of his special permit to work on that on Saturdays. To work on? To work at the properties on Saturday. So he does have the right to. Now, when you say properties, his property or outside properties? His property. His property. His property. So if vehicles need to come and go to pick up materials, he can still come. And still go, okay, from that property on a Saturday, okay. So it's on a Sunday. If correct me if I'm wrong, son, he doesn't have the ability to work from that site on Sundays. Is that is that correct? It says in the condition of the permit that it's Monday through Saturday, seven a.m. to eight p.m. Yeah, seven to eight. Yep. Yeah, and it says that's for all work performed off-site with two trips daily between the hours of seven and eight. Oh, so that's that's some that's that's a hot hot topic right there. Uh, when you say his work isn't supposed to be, uh, oh. it's supposed to be off site, right? But he still has to be able to pick up his materials, get in his vehicles, okay, you know, and then go out to the sites. Yeah. Now, how are we gonna how are we gonna monitor this? So that's that is a uh, wonderful question. Uh, yeah, how is this gonna be monitored? That's, so the that's town has a position which I don't believe is currently filled. Uh, at least I was told it was not currently filled no. of, of a building inspector slash zoning enforcement officer. Okay. And it is their responsibility to enforce conditions like this. Okay. Zoning issues. So as of right now, that position is vacant. Yeah. I know they are actively trying to resolve that issue and, no. Yeah. So are you saying right now he can run his big tractors and stuff on Saturdays and uh, up to eight o'clock at night? Is that what you're telling me? Rob, do you want to read? He run, like he's got tractors, you know, as tall as a ceiling. He can run that. Rob, do you want from to seven? Would you say eight and again? Eight yeah. to eight. To, what was the hour? So I'll just read the whole condition again. So this is the condition from the existing permit that was approved in 2009. It says all work is to, to be performed off-site with two trips daily between the hours of 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday, allowing pickup and return of trade vehicles. Okay, two trips. Okay, not, not 20 trips, two trips. It says two trips. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. how are we going to enforce that? I, I, I hear you, and that's the number one issue that we get from people. Yeah, how do you... Sometimes you put conditions on things. You, yeah. you are, you are having faith in the petitioner to do what condition yeah. requires it to do. Yeah. So, uh, how are we going to address this noise situation? So that's the other interesting thing. So the town does have a noise ordinance. Yeah. It is not in the zoning ordinance or zoning component. It's a general bylaw, mm -hmm. and it's seven to ten. Yeah. Seven in the morning to ten at night. What kind of noise are we talking about? It's just general. It doesn't get specific. So you can run. He can run his tractors up to ten o'clock at night. No, his permit says eight o'clock. Right. Eight, even eight o'clock, he can. It's, it's, it's a condition of the condition. permit that he got back in two thousand and nine. Wow. There are a couple of things so in the site visit that we we are likely to recommend to help reduce the no, no. the noise. Now when when he when you're saying he can run his tractors, you you're not saying hours upon hours and hours, right? 
Well, I would hope that he would not do that. Well, I, I would hope. Point it. I, well, I would hope. No. And I wouldn't think that would make a lot of business sense for him just to run the vehicles for hours upon. I don't know. You hours. tell him. You're going to have to ask him why is he doing that. Yeah. That's my major concern is the noise. And I, I can't enjoy my backyard. I just, quality of life is, forget about it. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be difficult. With oh, no, responses to you. No, but that's why we're kind of we're kind of hamstrung yeah. with some yeah. some things no. that are within our purview and others that aren't. Yeah, but if you believe that he's operating, you know, after eight o'clock, or if you believe that he is, you know, operating the vehicles excessively, and they're impacting your quality of life, it's right. On, right. That gentleman to the far right is the planning director, and you can contact him. Or if it's after the hours that are on his special permit, you have the ability to call the police and file a complaint with them and see if they'll enforce it. Oh, okay. If the noise is excessive, you mean like yeah. hours and hours and hours? If 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 you believe so. Yeah. yeah. It, I, 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 maybe I'd like to ask him, what, what is he doing that's so necessary where he's on his, you know, his big tractor's? And then he goes to the Bobcat and then he goes to his chipper and for hours and hours. I, I don't know what's going on. Well, he does. So on the site visit, he does have materials yeah. there that he uses as part of his business. Yeah. He brings material on site and then he has to move that material off site when he goes to customers. OK, so there are some materials that are stored there. We saw a very large mound of uh, loam was one thing there were. Uh, bricks and pallets so forth, and pallets and things like this yeah. that would go, that would be brought in, yeah. stored for however long, and then, you know, used at a customer's thereafter. So it's going to require a forklift and yeah. other things. Yeah. yeah. So this home-based business uh, was created by town meeting back in, I believe they created it in 2008, Pete. Okay. And then- Really close to that. Yeah. And then nine. and then actually did the permitting for individual properties in right. 2000. And we, did, we did a site uh, visit for every one of them. Yeah. 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 So there was a previous there was a previous planning board hearing yeah. for about 13 different businesses that had been in place for quite some time oh. on their residential properties. They each had to come in and get a special permit yeah. where conditions could be placed upon their continued operation. <clears throat> so basically, yeah, that's it. The. Uh, the uh, the amount of time that the noise, okay. yeah, the noise of time, you know, hours and hours and hours, like, oh, my God, give me a break, you know, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. I wasn't I wasn't aware about the hours exactly, but, you know, you said Saturday can do that, too. Saturday he can do that. Yeah, but not Sunday or holidays. It doesn't specify holidays. It just says, you know, Sundays. Doesn't say anything about holidays either? No. No. That fall then under the noise ordinance because doesn't that mention the open noise? The other noise ordinance would take over. Yeah. So, so what does that mean, like? So if he were doing it on Christmas, yeah, you'd want to call the police. You'd, you'd have, you'd have, there'd be a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> holiday, a holiday that's not, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's basically it. Just okay. you know, I just can't enjoy my backyard anymore. Yep. And I've been putting up with it for so long. I, so if you're two doors down from Mr. Right, Fred's, I'm two houses down. So we noticed that there's a, someone correct me because maybe I was a little long in my estimate, but it appeared to be about a hundred feet from the property line. And from the property line, he's got about a hundred feet worth of rows of arborvitaes that he's either growing for use on other properties or, or whatever. Yeah. But that appeared to be a pretty decent buffer. Now that narrowed the further he went away from Westwood. Yeah. And so I think you might find us, you know, putting a condition on that would uh, create additional buffer down there as well. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's just my guess. And I'm one boat. So uh. there is a comment from uh, Bruce Fenney. Yeah. Uh, regarding the drainage, and so maybe Felix was one that did it, uh, regarding the drainage down the bottom of the property, not to plant a lot down there because it'll mess up the drainage. So okay. I'll have, right. have to consider that. Yeah. It came from Felix or Bruce that's in here. He's so like just to refresh now, what are my options now? Just to get it straight between me and you. From what, what I just told you. Okay. What, what are my options? All right. So 
He has the right from seven to eight, Monday through Saturday, okay. to operate the equipment on his property. He said, oh, hold on, hold on. All right. People, we're going to do this to make it verbatim. Rob, one more time. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I do want to mention, though, there's another condition that says he's not allowed to do any fabrication, manufacturing, retail, or wholesale sales on the property. So that's one thing to note. Then this other condition that I just read earlier says all work is to be performed off-site with two trips daily between the hours of 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday, allowing pickup and return of trade vehicles. Okay, two. Yeah, two, not 20. And and I guess my interpretation of doing <clears throat> work off-site is different than loading and unloading materials to take off-site to do that work. Okay. So that's just my interpretation. I don't know if someone has something. I'm fine, fine with it. Have you that's, 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 that's it. No. Matt, try to get a hold of them. I don't know how many times. Maybe just the, did you get did maybe, you get maybe Matt's, we did it. Yeah, we got it. We did. Yeah, yeah, we got very it. well written. Well, did you see what Matt said when he tried to contact him? Oh, maybe I'll try that again. It says I tried several times to address these concerns directly with Ms. Rochella, both in person and over the phone with no response. When I call, I get no answer and leave messages and I get no return call. I've knocked on the store and got no answer, even though I can see people are home. I am opposed uh, to allowing any amendment to the original uh, permit. It says, I am appealing to the uh, planning board to investigate and trust the issues above as it relate to the original special permit to protect my me and my neighbor's property values and quality of life. So I'm in the same boat about quality of life. And uh, that's why I, that's why I was here. I think everybody should have a conversation, your neighbors. That's the way I look at it. Have a, a constructive conversation with the Rochellas and you guys. I, 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 that's just my suggestion. I mean, we could talk, but and maybe say, "Hey, could, on Sundays, could you quiet it down?" Because he has a right on Saturday to work. But if, if it's Sunday that's bothering, talk with him. That's just my suggestion. But I, but I know, I know. Matt said, and he's not getting anywhere with Matt. Well, they're, they're well aware now that it's it's, it's yeah. come forward to the public and the planning boards. So I wasn't I wasn't even aware of the, this until recently, just a few weeks ago. About well, maybe maybe now that it's all out in the open, we talked, discussed it, that you could revisit that and try to have a conversation with them, and and everybody be good neighbors to each other. During our site visit, we expressed concerns of the neighborhood. Yeah, at length. Yeah, what could be done to correct them? So, all right, we are. Very well aware of what your concerns are. Yeah. yeah. And I appreciate you coming. Yeah. This has been going on, though, for <laughs> a long time, you know. And now we're going to try to fix it okay. as much as we, we can. Best. Yeah. We, we appreciate your position. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we understand. Believe me, we understand. This isn't the first time we've dealt with something like this as far as noise and yeah. lights and things like that. You know, we know. Yeah. We deal with it all the time and we come up with yeah. equitable solutions. I mean, I got the nicest neighbors. I think he's taking advantage of our, because everybody's so lenient and everything. They're so wicked. And even Matt, his, his business and everything, you can't be, for a businessman, he's stellar. And as a person, he's unbelievable. He'll help you out, do anything for you. They got, he's a, just an unbelievable person, you know. And my dealings with him, both as a business and a person, you know. He's a, he's a great, great person, okay. you know. I think this Michelle, Mr. Rochelle is not respecting us at all. No respect at all. That's all I have to say. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Anyone else like to be heard on this matter? Please step forward. Max Brands with 15 Lassard Circle. Um, I just want to bring up a couple of things real quick. I'm going to be short and sweet. In regards to Pete, I appreciate your opinion. I was very intentional leaving my email and phone number so that the Rochillas could reach out to me. That's open offer. I, I mean that. I really want to work it out. I do run several small businesses. I would like to see them succeed and work within the community, not be a hindrance to it. Um, the only reason we have any reason to look that way is because of smell and sound. 
that's it. I was always under the impression that no work to be done on site meant no flipping pile, no manufacturing loam, no anaerobic decomposition because we're dumping the business waste there. Um, I did have a chance to see because there were some hedges that were cut very short. I don't know much about landscaping. That might have been for the health of them. Um, but that allowed me between that and some trees that were taken down to see clearly over there. Five years ago, I was never able to see what was going on. I could only hear noise and smell. The smell is very offensive to me. Other people may find it appeasing. Um, but those are the things I just wanted to bring up real quick. I was on the impression no work on site meant no work. Loading and unloading is one thing. That's a whole different deal than flipping piles, moving material. So we did ask what they, we specifically asked about the pile of loam that appeared to be really substantial. Quite substantial. Yeah, pile. And we were told that that was there for use on jobs at other locations. Okay. So well, grass breaks down and, and material breaks down. And so that made me, that made perfect sense for the type of business that they're operating there. So it smells for a whole nother reason. I've done quite a bit of research into, yeah. um, we get it. some chemistry and I know way more about it just because I, I become interested in a subject. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I, I mean to address you, not them, but I, I would love for them to reach out to find a very appeasable solution for all of us because yep. so I think it works for them is probably going to work for us. Hey, hey, Rob, is composting allowed in town? I don't think it is. It it is. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. It's encouraged. They used to have compost bins at town hall every so often. They're doing anaerobic yes. uh composting. So any anaerobic decomposition, you should look into what's involved with yeah. that. That's not allowed. Most of it is just like grass clippings and leaves and things like that. We'll do like banana peels. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. Yeah. It's little stuff. Not no, I know what you're talking about. That's I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. That's what's encouraged. I know. That's composting. Yes. Right. So what are you talking about? It's just uh, grass clippings and whatnot. Right. If you don't con constantly. So that's how like the um, West Springfield, the dump caught on fire. It was because they weren't allowing Ammonia. oxygen to get into the grass. Piles. Exactly. They weren't flipping piles. piles. Gotta flip and the same thing is going on back there. That's why we can smell it. So if it's done correctly, there's no smell. Zero. So if it's not done correctly. There's smell. So you constantly have to run temperature. Probes. Builds up ammonia and all that stuff. Like it's that. actually hydrogen sulfide. So if you look that up in farms, for instance, they use it for a, a power source. So they'll they'll recover the methane gas from from big cows big and everything. It's really interesting. Big over in Europe, but not in. A, yeah, not I'm talking about all. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but the only big pile i saw was the loam pile yeah me too that's yeah. only that's all i saw there was some pine that would have been chipped up sitting there yep. yeah it's not smell at all no i, I, I didn't see a compost it pile and when it when it moves yeah. when it smells so right oh. I, I really appreciate they started moving some piles and everything and oh, the loom. oh i've been ecstatic about that over the past couple of weeks even though it made tons and tons of noise and we lost the last few weeks i see the forward progress and that's well, we're going to try to give you some more. Yeah, we're going to get some, some more. To bring up too. Yep. Right. So I did some quick research on the town's um, bylaws, and I'm not seeing anything specific that talks about the types of composting that's allowed. I'm only finding a fee schedule for compost bins. Yeah, our town hall every so often has compost bins. Yeah. Also. But I'm also not seeing anything about composting out in the open. So I guess also just want you can't compost. both of you to to understand. So. The fact that they have applied for an amendment, mm -hmm. okay, um, also allows this yes. board to put some more amendments on it or to change some amendments yeah. as conditions. And I think that you will find that we're going to do that. Yeah. I mean, the real reality is if yeah. it amends to 50 cars parked on site and they only come and go once a day, he's going to complain with that. But leave the reverse buzzers on. There's kids at the church. They're supposed to be they're supposed to be parked that they can drive out without any any backup. Uh, yeah. but, but that's the way it's supposed to yeah. be. The the point is, there's always kids around. I, I saw that reverse buzzer thing, and I think that should be ousted. They should have reverse buzzers. Yeah, but if you don't if you don't have to put the truck in reverse to get out of the parking lot, then you don't hear it first thing in the morning. Fair enough. So they're supposed to be backed in at night. And driven out in the morning. I was on the board when we wrote this bylaw, mm -hmm. much as we did. That makes sense. But that's that's the way it's supposed to be. So you drive out and there's not beep, beep at seven o'clock in the seven morning. Seven o'clock in the morning. That's the way that's was the uh 
the flavor of the law. I understand. By, by law. That makes sense. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate Anyone it. else like to be heard on this matter? If not, do I have a motion to um, end the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. Aye. Want opposed? Hearing none. The public hearing is closed. I open it to the board. Well, I think that after our visit today, the Rochillas understand what the 200 square feet is for outdoor storage. The desire for the old equipment to be gotten rid of. Um, there's a couple of extra loaders that are there that aren't on this, so we have to take care of that. As far as the dirt and manufacturing, I don't call that manufacturing. I mean, if you were making cordwood or something like that and selling it, that's manufacturing. But just moving dirt around, putting it in a dump truck and leaving and not coming back eight times during the day, that doesn't seem to be as bad. I understand that when you turn the dirt over, yeah, it's got a little bit of a smell to it. But is it every day? Not because we didn't smell anything. Not recently, no. Okay. It, it through the summer they've been really conscious. And, of and they, I was told they're downsizing too. Um, but so. I will tell you, it it smelled terrible when it wasn't being flipped from about July until the first meeting in August. But that's the heat. The heat will affect yeah. it even more. Yeah. But if we just dump I things at the okay. dump like every other landscape. Okay. All right. All right. All right. That, that public hearing is closed. Okay. So uh, maybe I'll just get the ball rolling a, l a little bit. Then we we talked about more arborvitae style. Right. Yeah. So do you want to make that a condition? Yeah, and where I, do you I want would, to do I it? make a condition that they do a double roll of arborvitaes all along the back of the property. Yeah, but we have to find out where Felix is, what is Felix is talking about with the drain that's down there? Because that's a problem. You can see the easement on this. Yeah. It goes across from where that stump was. It seems that's kind of a target. So is that where the drain is? I think I think that's where the drain is. Google image picture. It's got the easement across the back. It seems like where that stump was. Yeah, down the back. Yeah. That seems to be a, a to also verify to it. Right. But I agree. Putting them right where the other ones are is going to be right through the easement. So and you, if it's not working properly, the town should address that. DPW, if it's not draining correctly. And I was told that there's water. There is water back. So there's some, something's not right. I ask a question about the condition you're proposing, Pete. So you're suggesting double row of arborvitae just along the back or no. the back and the side where the church is? The west end of their property. Okay. So where, where all the new houses are. You can see the houses plain that they sit. Okay. So along the back facing the houses and then along yeah. where the church. Um, not the church. Not the church. On the west, the west end of their property that goes along where the new developments are. Yeah. yeah. I see. Okay. And I would say they should be at least six, seven feet tall. They got a ton of them. But again, taking into account the problem with the drainage back there, if the land is not draining and it's stagnant, there's a drain there. It's supposed to work. So that has to be addressed. Who addresses that? Um, that would be DW. Okay. So, Rob, we're going to ask you to address that issue with the DPW. So that might be some of the smell that you're getting so it, it, it's wet there yeah. it is wet back there if it's yeah. not draining properly that that's it, an issue felix from my windows okay Good. you guys saw more nights yeah. so we're going to do a double row of arborvitaes okay um what's that that i'm going to throw this out as a condition to plug it up though that but it's not working properly the vehicles and this is where the rashilas are going to need some help from you okay so we kept going back and forth on your list of what you want to add, replace. So, and we saw five bucket loaders and there aren't five bucket loaders on this. So we talked about, hold on one second. Okay. So I'm okay with nine Vehicle. Tom Sewer. Okay. Sewer at the rear of the property. The vehicles need to be submitted to the planning department. Okay. No later than October 31st. Okay. And that's going to be your list. Okay. 
So you decide what they're going to be, and then you're going to have to stick with it. And under no circumstances should any of the vehicles parked elsewhere in town then be brought back onto that property. So this is the list of nine. You have to provide it to the planning department by October 31st of this year. The other thing is I would like to have um, when there is a zoning enforcement officer on, um, I would like the zoning enforcement officer to be allowed on the property to see that all non-usable um, vehicles, because you did have some that didn't have plates, you had some that were kind of being cannibalized, that they're either in a storage area and out of sight <laughs> or removed from the property. So, yes. Can I read the regulation on that real quick? Okay. okay. So, in residential, in districts where residential uses are allowed, which includes this one, this one's in the residential district, it says you can't keep more than one unregistered or inoperable vehicle. So they only can keep one of those vehicles that isn't registered anyways. Okay. They have to get rid of all the other ones. So that's trying to find the exact statute. So but there were some part, there were some vehicles that you said were, you were cannibalizing them for parts. So the parts you can just move into the storage units and, you know, that's fine instead of just hanging around on, on the property. I mean, that's, you know, you're okay to do that, but so. And that's under uh, chapter 450, section 3.3 .3 of the town code. Um, that's where I'm pulling this exact regulation from. Um, but yeah, if it's a full vehicle, it still works, but it's not registered. Or even if it's a full vehicle put together that's not operable, you're only allowed to have up to one on the property just because you're in a residential district. That's for everybody. A residential district. Yes. And then Pete, I thought you did a really good job on the 200 square feet. Can you make a condition? The condition is on that? Yeah. Um, well, they're, they're allowed to have outside storage on the 200 square feet, so 10 by 20. Uh, they have bricks, blocks, and some other, there's, there's pallets stacked, things like that. And I suggested to them they find a spot on their property where they can put it. And they said that they want to get a storage container to put it inside of, which if that's correct, if that's allowable, then that's beautiful. That's better than outside storage. Yeah. yeah. Work, work to get it done, but... And that's in a building that way. And then just a general cleanup, like you had an old basketball rim lying there. Just, you know, get rid of it. It doesn't need to be there. It's just not good. What other things did we want to address? Yeah, we did. All right. So, so let me just say one thing. I was wrong. It's a sewer easement that's back there. All right. They're going to have to have DPW over there when you go to plant the, the double row arborvitaes. It's around it. It's on the other side. Oh, you know where it is? Yeah. Okay. We, we planted the dark roads around it. Okay, because that was from okay. uh, that was from okay. Felix. Yeah. Just concerned about it. Oh, we went right along the side back. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, do you mind if we go through the list that I included conditions in the project report? There's a bunch from the exam yep. permit that I think we should review. Yep. And then a few other ones I suggested that yep. you consider. It's all highlighted. Yeah. So the first section there is kind of like, from that um, original permit. Um, and those are the ones that um, were still applicable to the operation today. Which is We will amend it so not to exceed nine trade vehicles because that's on your list. Nine. Okay. And it says here that your uh, there are applicant vehicles appear to encroach on the side and rear yard setbacks. So are you familiar with the concept of side and rear yard setbacks? Mr. Chief, I'll make sure that they understand. Okay. Okay. And you are? I ran Mark Tanner from Bacon Wilson. All right. Thank you. 
Okay. So it says you can't have, there are rear setbacks and side setbacks from the property lines. And so you can't park a vehicle right on the property line. They have to be off of the property line so many feet. Okay. Okay. So trade vehicles, side setbacks, rear setbacks. Am I missing something else? Um, so if you go to the, um, I think it's page five of the Frog Trail application report, there's a highlighted list of conditions that were uh, recommended to keep the previous permit and then new conditions to include. Um, do you actually give you mine, Mr. Jim? I got it. So I think we should go through that list and decide if we want to keep certain conditions. Um, or if you want to get rid of certain conditions, I feel like that'd be the wisest choice to consider. All right, then do we need to read these into the record? Uh, I would, yeah. All right, first condition from the previous special permit. The special permit shall run with the owner and not with the land. The special permit is non-transferable. The use is only allowed by the owner of the property and the business. At all times, the owner must live at the premises under the special permit. The special permit will expire upon the termination of the existing operation as approved and permitted or upon the sale of the property. Just Outside storage of materials and equipment shall not exceed 6% of the lot size, excluding wetland resource areas. Outside storage shall always be garaged or properly screened from sight of abutting properties and ways to the rear of the principal building as specifically approved as follows. Garage structures measuring 33 and a half feet uh, by 26 feet, 22 feet times 62.6 feet, and 14 feet by 24 feet. Outside storage measuring 10 feet by 20 feet. No fabrication, manufacturing, retail, or wholesale sales shall take place at the site. No signage will be erected at the site. Any employees that come to the site to pick up vehicles must park their vehicles in the same location as the vehicles they are picking up. No employee vehicles shall be parked in the driveway or on the street. All employee vehicles must be out of sight. The number of employee vehicles is limited to the number of trade vehicles permitted on the site. All work is to be performed off-site with two trips daily between the hours of 7 a.m. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, allowing pickup and return of trade vehicles. No vehicles will be picked up or left off on Sunday, with the exception of emergencies or weather responses involving the health and welfare of the town residents. The town shall not be altered or the site shall not be altered or used except in conformance with the terms and conditions of this special permit. So before I go further, do we want to, do I have a motion to reaffirm those conditions? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, the uh, director of planning is, is recommending the following conditions. The applicant shall adhere to the noise regulations enumerated in the Eastland Meadow General Bylaws. Okay. Vehicles with backup signal alarms shall be placed so as not to activate during the early morning or late night hours in the case of emergency or weather responses. A landscape buffer with vegetative screening shall be kept at all times to shield the garages and outside storage areas from abutting properties. No more than 20% of the existing principal structure shall be used in connection to the home-based business. People want to adopt those? Yeah. I'd make the motion too. Okay. Motion made, do have a motion made and second. Any discussion on those? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And then on the conditions of, um, I've already forgotten them. So the vehicle list. The vehicle list to be submitted, no more than nine vehicles to be submitted to the planning director by end of business on October 31st, which I believe is a Wednesday? Thursday. Or Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Yep. Okay. Um, do I have a, a mo I made the motion. Anyone want to second that? Second. 
Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of that condition, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the double um, arborvitae requirement along the back of the property and to the rear of the properties of Lazard, where applicable? And the side between the church, because that is supposed to be screened from the side of the church, the dirt piles and so forth. Okay. They've got a plenty, of, a lot of tall rubber vites. I think that row that they have should be reinforced with some taller rubber vites. Any discussion? Yeah, Rob. I was going to ask, do we um, make a motion to combine that with the condition we approved regarding the landscape buffer? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As amended. Yep. Okay. Motion made a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of that condition, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, did I miss anything else? Board members? Okay. Original. I, can we say something? I mean, I know you said something about the cleanup, but can we make that a condition? Are we allowed to do that? A condition for screening? Of yeah. Yeah. Another word. No, not for screening. Not for screening. Just general condition general of the plan. property. The, the defunct loader in the back is not registered. The, the uh, chassis of one that's sitting there. So you can make a condition as long as it's is to help them make one of the findings of the special permit criteria from our bylaw. And one of the specific findings that this could apply to is um, appropriate screening by walls, fences, nuisances, such as noise, safety concerns, general appearance, um, exterior features or appearance not be detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood. So as long as it kind of works to alleviate those and help them meet those criteria, then you can include that as a condition. You're talking about general appearance, it looked like there was an old air compressor parked in between a bunch of stuff that was growing up. They get rid of that thing and the other stuff and clean that up. That'd be it. Would be really nice. You know what I'm talking about? A little tr the saplings going up and around that. I think it's a compressor, right? And if you're going to get rid of that, clean that up. That would help appearance dramatically. It'd give you space to use too. Yeah. Yeah. Mentioning the storage company, remember. Yeah. Not let, me, let me just yeah. yeah okay so essentially i mean the town bylaws just require the property owner to maintain it in a manner so it doesn't look like a junkyard and essentially that you had used parts hanging around it to me that's kind of a junkyard an interpretation of a junkyard general cleanup of the property if you're going to do the 200 square feet storage all the stuff along the driveway you know the bricks that were there and you know all that that's all gotta be put into that 200 foot unit or and, and yeah. the 200 foot uh, area so there was mr punderson and i believe you raised the issue of a storage unit do you want to have a condition on that allow that is it is it something we can allow i'm not Certainly. So, so as of I this moment, as of this moment in time, that is something we can allow. Okay. So if they said they were going to get a, a storage container and put all that stuff in there, that solves a lot of problems. It neatens things up dramatically. And it's, you know, it'll be in your, how big are those things? They're about 10 by 20, aren't they? You can get them any size you want. Okay. Yeah. Let's load it up. Yeah, right. Um, I, if you're going to make that a condition, I suggest saying that it's treated as an accessory structure that's to abide by setbacks for accessory structures. Um, okay. just so they place it in the correct location. So we then let's make a condition that we that this board will approve a uh, the location of a storage unit to um, house materials for the use of the business but it needs to adhere to proper setback requirements of the town and i mean the idea is if you get as much out of the open and in a unit that's great we have to keep in mind the six percent total coverage still yeah so if frankie just asked if he could put two of them if this hall depends on well how big it is and yeah. the square yeah. footage of it you have to stay you're only allowed to six percent of your total square footage yeah. so within the proper Right. Stores. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. And a second? Second. 
Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any other conditions? There's, there's still the, this, this may not be right for this time, but there's still uh, equipment parked over, um, what is it? It's behind your daughter's son's house. I don't know which ones live over there, but there's all that equipment that could be seen from, um, is it, what? what's the name of the road Bruce lives on? The little dirt road, Wedgwood. So that that equipment, I don't know if it's yours, who owns it, but if it if it's yours, where's that going to go? Because it's not supposed to be where it is. Uh, Mr. Punderson, can I actually um, ask a question? So, you know, the the hearing was advertised just for this specific property. So, if we were to question about different properties, that yeah, are yeah. Like linear, it's yeah. That's an enforcement issue. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an enforcement issue that would have to be more than another public hearing at a later time. I agree. I just kind of bringing it out. <laughs> so on the issue of the granting of the special permit for their request for an amendment with all of our amended conditions, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? So you, you want to approve... You want to approve changing of the special permit before we've been shown that things are brought into conformity. Good question. I would say no. Not prudent. Okay. You can um, require another site visit as a condition. You could say within six months, another site visit or something like that, um, just to make sure that they are in compliance. Well, I think they'd like to get the equipment straightened out before six months. So, yeah. yeah. But it's up to you to decide what that threshold is, but you can absolutely require another site visit if you want to, especially since we're without a building inspector at the moment. Well, I think that maybe we should have a discussion with the Rochillas how long it would take them to do all this stuff. And then, you know, don't put them in a box they can't, in an envelope they can't fulfill, you know what I mean? You can absolutely do that. There's a question for you. Frankie, how long do you think it will take you to get what we've asked done? Between working and stuff, it's the time to get to work. So whether because uh, what we'll do is we'll come back and see that everything's conformed, and then we will move on with your your request. A year, right? But December seventeenth, maybe. Get rid of all that stuff is the last one in our time frame. I don't have any some kind of six months. Okay, or. Depends on the weather. Yeah. Depends on the weather. Yeah. Depends on the weather. I mean, it's 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 your. We're trying to clean it up. So I mean. So what if in six months if we come back and everything is done, yeah. we're all good. I don't yeah. know. You want to wait that long? Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. We're trying to do it before, but okay. if things come up, we you know. And that's wrap. So um. You know, if you were to approve the permit today and, and make them wait, these conditions that we just approved that are new wouldn't be in effect at all. Right. Okay. So I recommend make a condition for site visit in a certain amount of time. And then, you know, that could be the contingency you'd have to revoke any special permit if they don't listen. So well, he said six months would satisfy it. So I'm up to you. fine with that. <laughs> I don't know what everybody else thinks, but that's... I would recommend Maybe six we months. Maybe well, condition and then... So and not to prolong this, but there are things that they can do now. That, planting. Well, I wasn't even thinking of the planting. Well, I was thinking of getting the trailer in there, taking care of the outside storage, removing all the junk that's on the property. I mean, all of well, that, that. That's what he was saying. He's trying to sell some, but it's going to take time to do that. Okay. To me, I just have a junkie come in there and pick it all up, cut the trees down. <laughs> Six months puts us at April. Yeah. Could you do the plantings in the spring and then everything else mm -hmm. before then? I'll go back in December if the weather's okay. I mean, so do you want to give them six months to conform to the new conditions and then we do a site visit? Let me just ask if I can a general basic question. I mean, how much landscaping work are you doing between now and December 1st? People. Oh, okay. Nobody does. I mean, but otherwise, what would what what would you normally go to December first? Depends on the weather. 
depends on if it starts snowing. Yeah, and I'm talking landscaping, not plowing. Oh, landscaping, yeah, end of November. End of November. Yes. Okay. Depending on if it's at that one week in December. Yeah. Okay. October. All right. With that, I, I think that'd be okay. Six months. Yeah. That brings it to April, brings it to the work time they can work, get things going because the ground's going to be frozen in a while. Well, maybe. Yeah, that's frozen. Maybe. You're going to plant a tree now, you know. You know, whatever you ask me. We'll plant a tree before the winter. Okay. Oh, okay. It's okay. time to do it right now. I mean, okay. Yeah, now okay. we will have time. Okay. Get everything cleaned up. Okay. Rain, I can't go in the back. So get the trees planted. See if you can get the container. Months, but it's a cushion period. To just okay. Sure. Okay. Well, six months. Six months. Okay, so six Someone want to make a motion. So six months for them to have the work completed or six months for us to do a site visit? Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to add that to the as a as a condition. Well, it is a condition. Huh? No, we have to add it. I know, but it, it is a amendment yeah, that we have to yeah. add it. Yeah. Okay. So amend the motion to add six months. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Second. In favor of that motion. In favor of that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And the general motion's on the floor. Right. The general motion is on the floor. There's a motion been made on the General motion. Yes. Has it been seconded? Yes. Yes. Okay. All in any discussion? And, and what's this now? The, the, the general. The whole package. All of it. You still want to delay that? If you delay it, they're not going to be able to do any work. Right. Because they don't know if we're going to approve it or not. Right. Okay. But this doesn't consider approving their, their request for change afterwards, correct? Confused. We said we have six months for them to get it conforming. Right. And, and, and if they don't, then they're in violation of the special permit. Right. And we can hold a hearing on their being in violation of the special permit. But they're asking for changes. And are we going to say, okay, the changes are okay right now? The changes they've asked for have been for changing the list of equipment, of vehicles. That's all they asked for? That was what's, 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 that's what's here. Yeah. But there's extras. We put in. <laughs> we put in the extras. No, but there's extra vehicles that are on that list. Yes, yeah, I, submit another right. and they have to submit it. Yeah, one okay. more vehicle by thirty first. By the thirty first. Okay. So all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you. So can I just please, please, please? You have two neighbors here. Would you please take the time and talk to them? and meet with them. You may not come to a happy conclusion, but the fact that you're going to meet and you're going to talk about it would be wonderful. Thank you. That new, that new position you were talking about with the zoning person or whatever? It's not a new position. It's an unfilled no. position. It's, just has, it's a new hire. Is that definitely going to be fulfilled? Trying to find somebody. Uh, I was told by a, an email last week that, yes, it will be filled. But they just have to find someone. Okay. Apparently, in Massachusetts, building inspectors are difficult to find. Good ones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Case hey, SP-2024-09, request for amendment of special permit SP-2021-01 at 621 North Main Street, Sussex Parcel ID 1A-54-85, Business Zone District, to allow for outdoor dining and change of restaurant tenant from Doritos Mexican Restaurant to... That's a lot. Thank you. Sure. Mexican Restaurant Applicant Barrera Inc. Six Locust Street, Falmouth, Mass. Zero two five four zero. Welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good to be back. Um, can you just uh, for the TV, you know, you know, can you let people know who you are? Yeah. My name is Jeff Oppenheim. I'm an attorney. Um, my practice is in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Um, I'm here. Uh, this evening to underline the importance of this special permit to my clients. Um, and uh, I'm with uh, our manager, Louis Paleo, and his is it a cousin. Well, you are a translator, <laughs> but also related and works at the restaurant. Okay. Um, uh, one of the other owners was intending to be here, but uh, had a medical emergency, so he's not able to come this evening. Um, this this uh, request this evening is is really quite a limited request. Um, 
this property has gone through countless special permits. Um, the last time I was here with, uh, with you was in 2021, and that was um, uh, to request a special permit for the use as a Mexican family restaurant, which you granted unanimously. I think Mr. Denver and Mr. Punderson were the only two people at that time on the board. So uh, this may be a new a new um, issue for the members of the of the uh, planning board. Um, so the applicant is Barrera Inc. and they're doing business uh, now as Matsalan Mexican Grill and Bar. And they're seeking specifically uh, permission from the board for the use of two outdoor decks, which are in existence and have been in existence for quite some years, to be used for the service of food and alcoholic beverage at eight separate tables of four maximum of 32 people. Um, if the outdoor decks are, they would be a seasonal use, they're outside. Um, uh, they have umbrellas on these tables um, and the use we anticipate being between April and October. Uh, uh, an equal number of seats would be not used in the banquet area of this building. Um, so, if we have 32 people sitting on the decks, we have 32 people less sitting in the banquet area. Now, we may have one banquet a month to give you, give you some sense of the use of that space. Um, and it's more likely that it's used in the colder months, not when it's very nice out, because the banquet area has no windows, so it's not as pleasant. Um, so we think it would work very well. As a matter of fact, it has worked very well through the pandemic. Um, we haven't maxed out on our parking. Uh, so um, I think, you know, it's one of those situations where it's almost, I think, ideal from a planning board point of view because the use has happened. You know, it's been in use for a couple of years as requesting that you actually now allow by special permit. We know of no problems with the use. Uh, we don't believe anything has been reported, uh, certainly nothing that I'm aware of or nothing that my clients are aware of. This is a family restaurant. Um, you know, it, in the past it was a nightclub and there was lots of stuff going on there, <laughs> which we have tried to um, overcome. On some level, you know, uh, uh, in the eyes of of, of the town, um, and uh, I think I think we've been successful at that. So the only change that we would anticipate in the exterior of this building is a, a row of plantings facing Granby Street, screen the decks from. Granby Street, which is partially residential, partially business and 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 the like. Um, and uh, so that, you know, we would anticipate it's on our plan. We'd anticipate that it would be a condition. Um, and we don't we don't anticipate any other changes to the exterior. Uh, the town has asked for one of the uh, uh, drainage structures to have a cap on it. No problem with that. Uh, we are happy to do that. Um, so um, that's essentially what we're requesting. Um, I'm, you know, very happy to try to answer any of your questions. We're not increasing the parking. Um, uh, parking uh, is is kind of maxed out on the site, um, and uh, I think your 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 planner is aware of that. Um, and we've given you all the uh, calculations, the parking calculations on the site plan uh, prepared by our uh, architect engineer. Um, hours of operation, we don't, we're not changing them. Um, uh, they're Sunday through Thursday from 11 in the morning to 10 in the evening. And Friday and Saturday night, where things tend to be busier, it's 11 in the morning to 12 midnight. Now, 
If I could go over the uh, specifics under the bylaw quickly with you. Um, uh, they've been outlined rather expertly by your town planner. And I'm going to mention to you what he's mentioned, but then I'm going to add in, in several cases, my own comments. The, the first uh, item is uh, the specific site must be a, an appropriate location for the use, structure, or condition. And uh, Rob says the site is located on a busy commercial corridor with other business uses surrounding it. The site is an appropriate location for the intended restaurant use. I would just add to that, it has a long history of use as a restaurant. Um, the site, including the decks, uh, have been used for dining um, and the service of alcoholic beverage during the COVID pandemic, crucial to the um, survivability of the restaurant. Second condition, the second finding is that the use as developed will not adversely affect the neighborhood. Um, the planner says the outdoor dining does not appear to be more detrimental to the neighborhood. Again, we've had a chance to kick the tires here. There's been that use, um, uh, we don't believe it will generate noise at 11 at a, a level that will disturb the neighborhood, which was a large subject matter of the prior hearing. Uh, the, the decks were used during COVID without incident. Third uh, finding would be that there's no nuisance such as noise, um, et cetera, or safety hazards created. Um, your planner says that the board should discuss this with us. We're prepared to discuss it. The outdoor decks have been used in the past prior to COVID, permitted by this board um, for smoking uh, under the, a special permit issued in 2018. And since the pandemic, it has been used for dining and uh, the service of alcoholic beverage. Uh, the request is to continue this pandemic level use. Um, there is a staircase that was added um, by our clients um, for emergency egress from, from these decks. The next uh, area of findings would be the adequacy and the appropriate facilities uh, to be provided for the proper operation of the, of the proposed use. Uh, there appears to be an adequate and appropriate facilities on the site for the operation of the restaurant with outdoor dining. That's from your planner. And I agree wholeheartedly. It, it's and be, it been, in fact, used in that way. Next uh, area of findings are uh, appropriate screening by walls, fences, plantings, or other devices shall be provided for parking areas. So along Granby Street and along, and along the rear of the parking lot, there appears to be no screening. There is a partial fence that blocks the view from an abutting office building slightly. The board should discuss this with the applicant. That's uh, uh, Rob's um, statement to the board. Um, and I, I, I guess I would reiterate that we are uh, showing our plan, a row of arborvitaes planted uh, next to the deck facing uh, Granby Street. Exterior features or appearances will not be detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood. Um, the planner says the outdoor dining will be located on an existing back, uh, he says, porch. It, we consider it decks. It appears that the exterior feature and any proposed signage would not be detrimental to the surrounding neighborhood. Um, I would just add again that there's a set of stairs uh, from the decks to the parking area. Um, they have been in existence. The, the, the decks have been in existence for a number of years and have been used for smoking since 2018 by a special permit. And the next condition or next finding would be number and design of access drives and traffic features shall be adequate for intended use. Um, and uh, the planner finds that there are three points of ingress and egress, and uh, two are located on Granby Street, one in the, on North Main, and there's uh, uh, no residential driveways located between the business parking lot along Granby Street and North Main Street. So we don't contemplate any changes, 
uh, to the parking areas or the in, in egress and uh, uh, ingress uh, to this site. Um, it has historically been paved essentially to the lot lines, as far as I can tell. Uh, next finding is, is the use in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the zoning bylaws. Planner says it appears to be appropriate in location and harmony with your zoning bylaw. Uh, and I would just add several special permits. One variance has been granted to the site by the town of East Longmeadow over several decades. Uh, the use of the site as a restaurant banquet facility has been well established as being consistent with uh, your zoning bylaws. And in fact, uh, the decks have been used during COVID without incident. The last uh, finding relates to local licenses, state and local licenses. And um, you should know that uh, we applied for a name change and that was approved on October 8th by the town council. Uh, we would be going back to the town council if you approve uh, the use of the decks for food and alcoholic beverage uh, to um, amend our liquor license. And then it would, of course, go to the ABC after that for approval or not. Um, so we're, we understand that process and we're prepared to do it, but it would be premature to have done it before we came to you. So um, before I take your questions, comments, uh, I just would respectfully request the planning board grant this special permit to, to allow the applicant to use the premises for food and alcoholic beverages consistent with their use during the COVID pandemic. Uh, I know that the board appreciates uh, that uh, as a result of the pandemic, um, uh, 130,000 restaurants in our country had to close um, because of their inability to provide outdoor dining. So um, in my experience, and I represent a number of restaurants, um, post-pandemic, you need to be able to serve food outside. Uh, there are people who are still concerned about exposure to COVID uh, and will not eat inside. But, you know, even those people who are willing to eat inside, I think uh, it's generally much nicer to be outside if the weather is, is nice. And it's important from a competitive point of view to be able to do that. So we'd appreciate a favorable vote this evening on the special permit if possible. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Take a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Public hearing is open. Does anyone else in the audience wish to be heard on this matter? I'll ask again, anyone in the audience wish to be heard on this matter or, or by Zoom? Hearing none, um, we can close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? second? Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of closing the public hearing say aye. Aye. So now we take it back to the board. Um, so my question slash issue is, um, the hours of operation of the outside deck. So, uh, I think I would feel really comfortable. Um, well, no, before I even say that. So I did, you might've noticed that in our package, we normally get something from the police department. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see anything in our package about this special permit. So I called Rob and said, you know, have you heard anything? Because normally if there were noise complaints or issues there, we would hear something from the police department and there were no issues at all raised by the police department, which I think is a really positive, pretty good, very, very good. positive thing. Um, but I guess the question is, I don't know how the board feels about a time limit on service or operation on the deck, outside deck? What time are the business, what, what are the business hours? Staggers. Business hours, uh, again, Sunday through Thursday, um, 11 in the morning till 10 at night. Friday and Saturday, closing at midnight. 
with other ones we've approved we've put time on it i believe we have so i think yeah. the greater do the same yeah so if you didn't hear so no, i didn't hear so we we've done another outdoor dining since the state's you know program ended and we did put a time restriction on that what was it 10 o'clock i think it was 10 o'clock I, I think that's reasonable So the only two nights that would affect would be Saturday, Friday, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Friday, Saturday. It's the only question I had is, will all serving and preparing be done inside? There won't be any preparing or food or drinks outside. The, the kitchen's inside, the, the bar. bar's inside, and food and beverage would be brought out. And there'll be a wait staff outside specifically for that. Yeah, to, okay. to take care of those tables. Okay. One person. All right. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question sure. regarding the hours of operation? And so just to clarify, the hours of operation from Sunday to Thursday are 11 to 10, and then Friday, Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Is that correct? Because I think so it was a the request for it was for 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. to midnight, and the board seems to want to condition it till 10 on the decks. On the well, decks. On the decks. We're not changing the hours of operation. Well, I, was, I was asking for the business itself, well, so I know. Okay, so... So all we're seeking to amend is, you know, uh, for the use of the decks. So, um, and what I'm hearing is that uh, the board might be in favor, <laughs> I won't say anything more, uh, of using the decks up till 10 in the evening. Exactly. Yeah. Seven days a week. Seven yeah. days a week. Just trying to be consistent yeah. with all the things we've done. So yes. one more question, Mr. Chair. I'm going to keep interrupting. The no, it's okay. Um, All right. I need you out here so I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um, I guess for if you're going to propose a condition for hours of operation, I recommend, so they don't have one for the business itself on any of the earlier permits that I could find. So you should condition both the regular hours of operations for the business itself, but also include the hours of operation for the outdoor dining as one condition. So that was my question is, wouldn't that be more of a condition on the liquor license? That's what I was thinking. I think so too. Yeah. But you could you could do it in zoning if you want as well, but you don't want to contradict what the liquor license no. is going to allow. So, um, What's your liquor I license? Predict you, but isn't there a condition in our existing permit? I couldn't in, find Indoor use? No? Oh, it, not for general hours of operation. It doesn't have like a set prime. Okay. So in the... Permit so as it may be that it's it's part of the liquor license. Probably, yeah. Okay. Maybe so the, out, the outdoor seating was not granted. Right. So there'd be no conditions on it. It was just a smoking deck. No, I understand. I'm just I'm talking about. The well, I think regardless, general operation. Yeah, just regardless, we're really here to discuss the outdoor right, outdoor dining. Right. So outdoor so dining till ten o'clock. So I think we're just going to focus on the outdoor dining. Yeah. So yeah. seven days a week, eleven a.m. to ten. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, any other? Uh, so why don't we just vote on that condition? Um, I move that. I move to add. Yes, to are, you, are we saying that people need to be off the deck by ten or less seating at? 10? What did we do with the last one? I thought it was out of there by ten. 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 Yeah. Out of there by ten. No use after ten. Yeah. Add the condition of. Okay. Done by ten. Everyone gone. Okay. Shut the deck down. Ten on one. I, I can't do that in a motion. <laughs> I can say it now. I can. Yeah, the motion. I get it. I get it. There we go. Uh, do right, I have a second? Down. Second. Any further discussion uh, on this condition? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So we, we should put in the conditions the, um, and you've agreed to, you're going to do this, the um, row of Arborvites. Yes. Okay. So on Granby Street. Um we should also add, just to reaffirm, that the existing office space on the second floor must be used solely in conjunction with the operation of the restaurant. The maximum number of patrons allowed on the exterior rear deck for outdoor dining shall not exceed 32 patrons at all times. That the applicant or property owner shall work with the Department of Public Works to have a survey from the town's cross-connection inspector conducted to verify if any backflow device is needed for the sewer system, this must be done within six months of the filing of the special permit with the town clerk. It's been done, Mr. Okay. Okay. We got it done already. The applicant or property owner shall have installed a hood to the 
Pet Basin located between parking spots 19 and 20 is referenced in the approved parking plans. We discuss hours of operation. Change of ownership of restaurant. What did you want to discuss with that, Rob? So uh, I don't know if you, so technically the applicant is not the property owner. Right. So I know generally for special permits, at least in our town, we automatically require a transfer of special permit if the ownership changes. But in this case, just the ownership of the business. So I don't know if you want a special condition for where if say the business were to change again, would you want to do just another amendment, leave it the way it is, or if you want to make it more specific to this property in terms of the process of going from one business to another, if it was to happen sometime in the future. And you could just strike that completely and not worry about it. That's up to you, but I figured it's a good thing to think mm -hmm. about just in case. Mr. Chairman, could I just address that? Sure. So the name changed mm -hmm. and not the owners. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because, because of a, a claim by a California restaurant that we were using their name. <laughs> no. So it, it, we were sort of compelled to do this. It wasn't necessarily something that we were excited to do. Obviously, we've been branded as Toritos, and now all of a sudden we, we have to change our name. So, um, you know, in my presentation to the town council about the changes in the liquor license, if you approve, you know, they'll they'll know that the shareholders are essentially the same. Yeah, I don't so think the only thing that changes is the name on the liquor license, huh? And and the allowance of the use of the, the, the tech, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So um the conditions, I think we've voted on all of no, the ones I just read. So is there a motion to approve all those? So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. And then on the, the permit with conditions. So moved. Second. 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 Any, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Well said. It's a very good restaurant. The food is delicious. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. So work very hard. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Okay, ZN-2024-04 for consideration of amendments of subsections 450-10.3 and article X amounted total ballot. Relations of East Long Meadow Zoning Bylaw continued from 9 17 2021. Mr. Chairman, I'm oh. sorry. Um, okay. I was just asked. Um, I, I'm not sure this falls in your province, but if it does, maybe you can help us. Okay. We're asked to cover our sign because the sign hadn't been permitted. I mean, we changed the sign, it was yeah. a little bit at the cart before the horse. Um, and you know, have Matsalan on the sign. And I I guess it was the town council. I don't think it was this board that asked us to cover the sign. No, we don't do signs anymore. Yeah. So it's the building department. Uh, I believe they're in communication with somebody from your team or designer, whoever's making the sign or made the sign. Uh, we are, so you guys have an active sign permit right now with us. It's not been issued yet. That's why the sign's supposed to be covered. We just need like a picture or a rendering of what the design is. We have tried several times to get that. We haven't had much luck. So would a photograph do? Photograph that clearly shows what the sign says and what it looks like. That's yep. totally fine. As soon as we get that. Up. We just uncover it, take a yeah. picture, cover it back, and then okay. you sign permit. Right. Thank you. Okay. Yes. How's that for working with the planning board? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. All right. All right. So Rob, you uh, you opened. So uh, make a motion to open the public hearing. Uh, so moved. So moved. Oh, any second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks. Go, all Rob. Right. So um, it's all yours, Rob. Thank you. So uh, the changes that I made since our last hearing are highlighted. So if you go to, please take it off the short layer. Yep. See at the bottom there. So for parking canopy, I did some research to see how small they actually make these structures. And what I came across was that most of them can cover at least six parking spaces. So I figured it made sense to kind of use that. And then the square footage of 972 square feet, which is six parking spaces worth of surface area, um, to be the minimum threshold for something to be classified as a parking canopy solar structure. 
hence requiring a special permit, or sorry, site plan review from the planning board in that situation. And if you go to the next page, the um, definition of roof mounted solar, say, I'm just call it PV to shorten it, PV installation. So I did increase this definition to make it less confusing with parking canopy. So basically what I'm saying here is that a solar PV system that is structurally mounted to the roof, in parentheses, solid roof and not an awning material. So they're putting it to an actual roof and not some temporary structure of a building, which includes residential dwellings, commercial buildings, and garages. Roof-mounted solar PV installations do not include solar PV installations mounted to parking canopies or similar structures. And the reason for this definition was so people didn't use the roof-mounted solar excuse to put a parking, say like one of those, uh, what are they called? Carports. Yeah. And just put solar panels on top of that and say it's roof-mounted. So this is to kind of help Good luck with the weight. Steer away from that. I know exactly the weight. The, the weight's a big, big yeah. issue there. Yeah. So that's the reason for including that language in roof mounted solar. Uh, the next area, I believe, it's, it's further back. No, I actually think that was it, Mr. Jeff. Um, there are very minor changes. Yep. Um, the other issues really arose from what I reviewed, um, and that's pretty much all I have. Questions from the board? Oh. So the motion would be to recommend this, recommend approval to the town council? Yep, for their consideration, yep. Do I have a motion to? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that passes. Hold well on. Next item. Wait, you have to close the public hearing too, Mr. Chair. Okay. So moved. So moved. <laughs> second. Discussion? No. no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. He's hungry. He is hungry. Yeah. <laughs> go to Mexico. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, all right. Mr. Mr. Clerk. Uh, new business SP-2023-08 to reconsider the expansion of munitions from three to five at 55-55 North Main Street, East Village Tavern. Original expansion was for six months and expired October 1st, 2024. <clears throat> John Joseph Sullivan, 53-55 North Main Street, Mass. For one zero. So this came to us as a result of the town clerk who was reviewing all of the renewals of the liquor licenses. And she spotted this, thankfully, and said, you need to act on this before they can come in and do the renewal. So again, I also talked to Rob. Um, really no uh, issues with the police department. Okay. So, so I'm going to make a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second, so a second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, it's actually not public hearing. It's just oh, okay, great. Regular public meet. I, you don't have to. Good, because Pete, uh, Pete doesn't have to hear me say it anymore. So. I'm listening. To <laughs> Hi. Oh, how's everyone doing? Good, thanks. Good. Um, anyone have any questions? Kind of straightforward. As I said, I haven't heard any complaints at all from anybody. Have you, have you done this? Have you increased the number of musicians? We have not. Oh, okay. we don't have plans to do anything big just small things okay um the irish sessions are huge for us we're gonna start doing that a little bit and then acoustic every now and again not not really anything planned it's a smaller space so if you put five people in to be totally honest with you it's it's loud so we try and keep it at a you know and do it between the dinner hours between six and nine so nothing nothing out of the ordinary is anything that we haven't already okay. doing so i guess the motion would to to make this uh permanent Yes. I have a motion to to do so. So moved. So a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All set. Thank you so much. You have a great night. Really, I do want to make comments. So um I noticed that the special permit that was approved for your business was never filed the registry of deeds. So technically you have up to two years after the day of filing with the town clerk to do so, or else the special permit does not become effective anymore. Okay. So what I recommend doing is going to the town clerk's office. If you don't have the original copies handy, get certified copies from her and then take that with you to the registry of deeds to be filed. And you'll thank me later for it. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll take care of that. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Good night. Rob, good heads up on that, Rob. Yeah. Rob, um, old business. Okay. So I just 
quick update on the accessory dwelling unit bylaw. Uh, I started on it pretty early on, but um, I should have something ready for the board's review, prelim review, um, November 19th. Right. And uh, we will definitely, fiscal trajectory, make that November, sorry, that February 3rd deadline. Um, no issues there from our end. Yeah. And then the next thing is the proposed drone bylaw. So I did actually include, I think it's the last page in your packet, a draft mile bylaw that I put together. Um, and the inspiration for this bylaw actually came from Chicopee and Holyoke which both have pretty good bylaws themselves on this. So essentially all it's doing is just regulating the use of drones, where you can do them. Um, it goes slightly beyond the federal regulations for unmanned aircraft systems, they call them, UAS, which is just a drone. Um, essentially it limits the types of drones that you can use um, up to 55 pounds, and they must be flown below 400 feet at all times. Uh, it gives you a process for how you're supposed to register the drone. Um, you can't go on other people's property without their permission. You're not allowed to fly or use it from moving vehicles. So a drone cannot go over a road that has moving vehicles. That's actually illegal. Um, and you can't fly over a building with inhabitants inside of it unless you get the written permission of the property owner first. I know that's that's federal law actually. Um, well, your property goes up to you know. It does. It does. It does. If you go above four hundred feet, you're technically in federal airspace, which is illegal, unless you have the clear authorization from the FAA. Um, and then, in terms of who is going to operate, sorry, enforce and issue citations for the specific bylaw, it would be the police department, and the authority to do so would be for non-criminal um, citations under Mass General Law Chapter Forty, Section Twenty One D. Then underneath for that, this is the last page on the bottom, not page two, talks about the uh, system of offenses and warnings. So first offense would be a written warning, second fine of $100, 250 for the third warning, and then the fourth or subsequent offense would be $300. So if it goes above four, they get fined $300 every time they offend further. Um, this isn't a zoning bylaw. This is a general bylaw. It's a general bylaw. So because I'm chair of the zoning bylaw review committee so this may this may come to to that committee it could through yeah. the council through the council yeah so it would have to go to the council no matter what right we can say it's from the planning board then the council could do their own process yeah, the council will kick it, kick it down to us yeah. and, and i'll keep this and use this as yeah. the guidance exactly yeah. and right. i'll be president right. for right. now. yeah rob there's no there's no uh regulations regarding uh airplanes you mean like the model airplanes there is so actually if you go to the definition unmanned aircraft mean, right Yep. Because some of them are 20 feet long. Have you ever seen these things? Yeah. I have, yep. Huge. Yeah. So it's basically included um, in the definition. There's some model aircraft, rotocraft, unmanned aircraft. Um, and essentially, the regulations apply to all those things. Okay. Yeah. It's just the specific ones for licensing and registering or just for the drones. Well, they're becoming more and more popular, so it's time to regulate them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised there's not stricter regulations regarding some of the big unmanned aircraft that they fly. Yeah. They've got jet engines on them. I know. I mean, they got Bombay doors. If they weigh more than 55 pounds, they can't be flown in town. Right. If, if you pass this by law. Well, that's, then it goes to the FAA. Yeah. Let them do it. Not like number six, no drone service. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to put that in there. It is. In. Oh, yeah. I think it's. All right. They, they have model airplanes that won't fit in this room. Oh, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're big. I've watched a ton of it. They probably weigh like a few hundred pounds yeah, at least. Just, yeah. So that would still be illegal to fly if you were to pass, if this bylaw were to be passed. And I believe that what we can do tonight, if you guys like this language, is to recommend to the town council for their recommendation think, to whoever else needs to do it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the next step. It looks good now. Good. Good. Better than that. Yep. Yeah. Do you need a formal vote? Yeah, vote, and then I can make a memo and send it to them. So moved. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll learn to say aye. 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 Nice job. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, right. And then uh, just looking out for my buddy. Are you all set? Um, I do have a few things I want to uh, have to get I'll go through this list. Quick. Um, so I gave the next four meeting dates to the yep. end of the year. We don't have the schedule created yet for next year. So, just, you know, get your calendars. 
Uh, November 5th is canceled due to the federal state elections, as you all know. Um, so we do have a potential application for November 19th, which is our next meeting about a month from now. We're still waiting on the materials and it has not been filed yet, but it's going to happen. I believe it's for another outdoor dining uh, type of special permit. I don't remember the exact list, but once I get that, you all need to be applying. Uh, three events that are coming up. Just to let you all know, we do have a. Um, I'm discussing with the Council of Aging folks tomorrow at. No, sorry, not tomorrow. Thursday at nine, we'll be talking about the Affordable Homes Act and extension joinings with folks at the Senior Center. We're doing another Centertown District Public Engagement events. Uh, I believe it's next Monday at six p.m. Uh, they'll be discussing the results of the first meeting back in May, which had focus groups. And then the last thing is that we are having a um, speaker, Chuck Marone. Um, he wrote a book called The Strong Towns. He's also a podcast host. Uh, he'll be giving a public presentation with a QA and a um, here at the Senior Center on November 7th, 6, 8 p.m. He's going to talk about the housing crisis. And then on the back, just two quick updates. We applied for a Complete Streets Project grant for sidewalks on Westwood Ave from Melwood all the way down to Maple Street. Uh, I will let you know if they get back to me and if we get approved for it. And then lastly, as I mentioned, I'm working on the ADU bylaw and it should be ready for the board to review in November. That's all I have. So Mr. Terrell, as the, as the planning board rep to the center square or center mm -hmm. town, so my neighbors have discovered that I'm on the planning board. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah. So I live not far from the corner of mm -hmm. North Main and Maple Shade, okay? And there is unanimous lynching of anybody associated who wants to extend a commercial <laughs> zoning all the way down <laughs> yeah. to CVS, which I think was under, you know, was one of the original boundaries that was discussed. Uh, yeah, the rationale was essentially once you hit the um, the office building at the corner of uh, Brook, I think it's Brook. Yeah, uh, yeah, Brook. Yeah, and then uh, then all the way down there, so you get to like the auto dealership and stuff like this. That's all residential property, and they are up in arms. You know, they believe that is a very big gap. That, so, so I, we've, we've, I, I've spoke on this and everyone has spoke on this and it's so that that's not the intent of this. The intent is to generally clean up the mismatch hodgepodge of zoning in the town. So no one's residential property will become commercial and you won't have a Starbucks next to you. Yeah. And so that needs to get out. Home. That really yeah. needs to get out. And I will, I mean, yeah. again, not to sound redundant, like we, we can't say it enough. Yeah. People Judges are just not hearing it, right? Yeah. We've every single meeting have shown what we're trying to do, explain what we're trying to do, and still people are going, you know, is this affordable housing? I'm like, oh my goodness, it's yeah. gone, yeah. right? It's like, um, we're trying, right? Yeah. But then in no way, shape, or form is yeah. that happening. But yeah. why, you know, again, okay, we'll continue to do these Good. things until we do something. We can <laughs> also announce that the uh, thing next Monday. So, yeah. okay, yeah. press get the word out there. Motion yes. to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye.